Okay, income tax. As I asked y'all to do, you need to read over this section, but we'll look over the first thing you need to realize, and that is this example. Karen earned wages of $38,200. She received an interest payment from a savings account. Now, let me ask you this. If you receive money, what is that? That's income. I don't care if it's money from your kids. I don't care if it's money from your grandparents. I don't care if it's lottery. I don't care if it's savings interest. If it's interest, if it's given to you, if it's a plus, it's income. And contributed $1,200 to a tax-deferred retirement plan. She was entitled to a personal exemption of $3,900 and that's supposed to, that's supposed to be TWO, is it not? And two deductions and two. Okay, y'all help me out. She was entitled to a personal exemption of thirty nine hundred dollars. Looks like to me that's supposed to be TWO. And two deductions totaling $6,100. Find her gross income. Her net income is $38,200. Okay? But she has interest. So you need to add that. So that's her gross income before taxes. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. Before taxes is gross. After is net. Now, her $1,200 is subtracted. Why? Because she is giving that to herself or she is putting that into retirement. So that is subtracted. That is not income. So it's subtracted. And that's equal to $37,750. And then from that, you subtract the $39 and the $61. Because those are exemptions and what? deductions. So in this one example, you've got to realize what's positive and what's what? Negative. Now, I will tell you from an accounting teacher, I'm not an accounting teacher, but one of my best friends is an accounting teacher, and she will tell you that accounting is nothing but addition and subtraction. Then why do people fail it? People fail it because they don't know when to add and when to what? Subtract, just like in this example right here. Now, when you subtract and add all the stuff that you need to subtract and add, you get your what? Taxable what? Income. Now, that taxable income is what is washed through the tax code. Now, you hear these politicians talking about tax codes. Well... We're going to go through that in just a second. And that is 80% of figuring out your income tax. All right? And, of course, this, you need to read this right here, but that's not a big deal. You know, if you're single, then you're going to file single. It's kind of a description of your life, okay? Um, and you can read those definitions. Read over exemptions, and I'm not going to go over that. They'll give you, if I give you a problem, it's going to have that in the problem. Itemize. Do we need to itemize? Itemize is usually what level you are. Um, they don't have itemized on here. They just, where is itemized? It's not, oh. If you want to keep up with all that stuff, that's fine, but, but but most of the time, a certain level, it and, and accountants know this, it is an advantage. Once you get to that level, you really don't need to do the itemize. So that's all I'm going to say there. Um, 
sometimes the deductions is more than the itemization. That's what I mean by the level. So, and I think that, well, it says, if you itemize your deductions, you can subtract 3650. But the standard deduction is what? So, which one are you going to pick? The 6100. I want to get to the tax code. There we go. Here we go. Now, this is what you need to. Uh, this is what uh, I told you last class. This is what you need to really focus on right here. It's on page 257. Now, as I told you last week, that thirty-six two fifty, or how, how, how much was it? How much was her taxable income? Oh, I thought it was thirty-seven. I thought it was this example they were using. Well, let me find it. Thirty-seven seven or twenty-seven seven fifty. Okay, 27,750. If you was to use that 27,750, then you would go up to here. You would be in this 15% bracket. But you got to subtract first because if you subtract, if you do 8925 here, and then you do 36,250 here, you're getting taxed what on the 8925? You're getting taxed twice, so you have to deduct that. And that is where people get confused. So the best thing to do is look at this next example. Okay, I don't know where they're getting, let's see, what are they on her taxable income? Okay, 36. Has it got a problem? It's got it on the next, I hate when they do that. Yeah. It's on the next, bottom of the next page. All right. Her taxable income is eighty thousand. So she's gonna be in the twenty five percent or yeah. She's gonna be a single, she's gonna be in this twenty five percent bracket. But you've got to do it the way it's supposed to be done. And the first thing you do is subtract what? Eighty nine twenty five. So eighty nine twenty five Eighty-nine twenty-five is going to be multiplied by what? Ten percent. Now everybody can do that. What is that? Eight ninety-two point five. Right? Move the decimal place. One place over ten percent of eighty-nine twenty-five is eight ninety-two fifty. Now, most of, most of the time people go, okay, there's no problem there. But the next step is where people have a problem. Now, you don't want to get taxed on the 89.25 again, so you have to subtract that out. So, what is that? Well, you got to take eight, uh, 36.250, right? 36.250. Minus eighty nine twenty five, and that's going to be multiplied at what? At fifteen percent. Now I'm going to kind of. All right, somebody take thirty six two fifty. 89.25, what do you get? I'm sorry, what? 
27325 times 15%. And what does that equal? 4,000. Ninety-eight dollars and what? Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents. Or is that supposed to be eighty thousand? See, I'll get confused. It's very easy to get confused. It's a screwed up system. Let me go down here and look. I might have let's subtract the eighty thousand. No, I did it right. Okay. Now, she's making eighty thousand, right? So we got to this level. Now, the eighty thousand is right here. But we gotta remember to take out what? Thirty six two fifty. Or note the, the previous the the twenty seven three twenty five. No, thirty six two fifty. I'm right. So now the next one. I'm not an accountant, people. I have to work it through this. So the next one is going to be thirty six two fifty. I mean eighty thousand minus. 36,250. Parentheses, and that's going to be multiplied at, what is it, 25%? And what is 80,000 minus 36,250? 51,600 times 25% comes out to be what? 12,000 900 dollars even? Is that not right? Okay. What'd you get? Seven hundred fifty even. Times the point two five. That's ten thousand nine hundred thirty-seven. Hold on a minute. Let me just do it. I was. I don't know what y'all were doing, but y'all must be on drugs or something. Because y'all get three different answers. I'll just do it myself. Y'all set me up. 80,000 minus 36,250 close parentheses times 0.25. There's the answer. Now I've lost it. 10937.5. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. Ten. Nine three seven point five. So now whoever this person is. Got to take eight hundred ninety nine hundred dollars, forty one hundred. That's five thousand. She owes about sixteen thousand dollars to who? To who? Who does she owe it to? The government. That's G U V M E M E N T. Government. Sixteen thousand dollars. Now, how does, she, how does she pay that? Does she write a check? Or is it withheld out of her check? That way. Now, depending on how many dependents you claim on your W-2 or whatever it is, 
depends on how much money you get back and how much money. Now I play no dependents or zero dependents. Which one takes out more? How do you pay check? Zero. Yeah. I claim zero dependents and I also do like seventy-five or hundred dollars extra. Okay. Therefore, when my income tax is done, I never owe Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam what? Owes me. And therefore, I get a check back. And usually it hits summertime, and usually that's my what I use to go on summer vacation. All right? That's just the way I do it. Some people do it that way. Some people don't. Some people take out 15 dependents, and you get, you know, hardly any of your, well, some of your taxes is not as high as zero dependents, but you get a bigger paycheck. But you run the risk of having to what? Oh, Uncle Sam. You don't want to owe Uncle Sam because that's extra what? Extra things you have to what? Worry about. Okay? Um, so the first thing you need to do is when you get a job is you need to figure out, first thing I would do is claim zero dependence and then watch that first tax year, see how it goes. If you get $100 back, bump this, then you need to give more money to Uncle Sam during your paycheck, and then you'll get it back during tax season. And that's what a lot of people do. It's kind of like a little savings account, a little nest egg or whatever. Okay? And that's what she's going to have to do. She's going to have to pay Uncle Sam $15,000. Now, she can write a check and go ahead and send it to him. But, see, but the way it's done is that it's pulled out of blah, blah, blah. It's pulled out of your, your paycheck. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, say it one more time. Yeah. No, what happens is you get a tax credit. For uh, so like she owes fifteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Let's say the tax credit for a child is twenty five hundred dollars, and you have two children. Then that's five thousand dollars that they take off of what you owe. A tax credit is basically Uncle Sam giving you a reprieve of owing. So when you get a tax credit for solar panels, when you get a tax credit for a windmill that you're gonna put out in your yard. When you get a tax credit for children, when you get a tax credit for having an electric car, those, huh? Yeah, you don't remember when Obama first got in? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and the batteries blow up and, you know. Uh huh. Okay, well, whatever. The whole point is they were pushing these electric cars down everybody's throats. And people didn't want them. And they said, okay, we'll give everybody a tax break. Well, they did. And I don't know if it helped them out or not. But anyway, the whole point is, if you have two children, that's $5,000. So that would be knocked off the 15, so it would be 10928 And that's like a credit to you. It's like money in your pocket that you don't have to pay. So that's what that happens. It's, it's purely uh, interest on your... Uh, Student loan, interest on your house payment, all that is deducted. Um, now, and just give you a little bit of example, my ex-wife, she doesn't make uh, as much as I do. But I have to give her a thousand dollars a month alimony. So I write that off. Okay. That comes off my taxable income, which is good because I haven't changed anything. And my taxable income, I'm still at the same bracket, but I don't have to pay as much, so that helps me out on the tax season. All right. But 
the ten fat the twelve thousand dollars that she gets from me every year, that's income for her, so she has to claim it. But she gets to claim the children. Even though we have half custody, she gets to claim the children because she's the mother and she gets to claim the children. So she gets five thousand dollars off of uh, taxable income because of the children. But one of them's graduating this year, so she's only gonna have one next year. So that's how that works. So and and, and it'll cover that. We'll get into that toward the end of the income tax section. Okay? So here's Robert. He's entitled to three exemptions, one for himself and one for each of his two children. As head of a household, he is also entitled to a standard deduction of $89.50. We subtract those amounts, blah, 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 and he owes $69.350. But he's also head of what? Household. Now, we can go back, and I want to make sure nobody gets offended for head of household. Uh, and if you go back, usually, where is the head, here it is, head of household? Applies if you are unmarried and are paying more than half the cost of supporting a dependent child or parent. So, technically, I could do that. I need to check into that. Okay? So, he's, let's look what happens to him. There's head of household. So now we're going to go down this bracket. So what you need to do is take your handy dandy tool, uh, dang old toolbar, I'm going to see if I can, y'all bear with me a minute. The reason I'm doing this is because what's the natural tendency? The natural tendency is to go with that first column. you got to focus on this column. All right, don't worry about the percentages right now. I want you to deduct where you have to. Dang it. Okay. Um, Write those down right now. Write these down. Just make sure you... This will be number one. This will be number two. And leave a space over here for the left because I'm going to put the percentages up. So up to 12750 up to 48600 up to 125450 and so on. Write those down. Yep. Yeah, one dollar. Yep. All right, let's move that over here. Well, I can't move it. I thought I moved it a while ago. Did I not move it? Oh, I know how. All right, so now write down your 10, 15, 25, 28, 33, 35, and 40 percent, or 39.6, I'm sorry, not 40, 39.6. You know why they let it at 39.6? Because they don't want to put it at 40. That's awful. 40% of the money you make. 
now you see why people vote dem uh, don't like Democratic versus Republican. Because what does Democrats usually like? More government. More government jobs. And what's that going to do to these numbers? Make them go up. Did you hear, uh, and I'm not bringing politics into this because I'm a Trump person, I'm bringing in Hillary. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Hillary. Um, did you see where she was in one of the debates, the debate in the Bronx the other night, and she said, I would form a new division called Immigration Control or something like that. We already have an immigration office. It's already too what? Big. That's why people can't get people can't get legal status because you have to go through all of these departments in the immigration and you takes you twice as long and three times the money because you're paying for all those jobs. It could be done it three quarters of those jobs could be wiped out and more people would become legal if they got rid of all those government jobs and got it down to a manageable, let's say, 100, 200 people. And, and a whole department is nothing but proctoring the exam to be a U.S. citizen. Give them $50, you know, give, give you guys write out a check for $50, boom, 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 take the test, become a legal citizen. There's another department that does the application for, and, and certificate. Boom, you're a legal citizen. Here's your social security number, da da da. Welcome to America. But that doesn't happen because instead of two departments in the immigration office doing that, you got 15 or 20 departments, each one with 15 or 20 or 300, and it's too big. Just like the IRS, just like DHEC, just like all them big organizations, and they're getting bigger and bigger, and then Hillary turns around and says, I'm going to form a new department or new division. And the Republicans, we want, to, we want to get rid of half the government jobs that's out there because all it's doing is raising those, raising these, and soon that 40% is going to turn into what? 50% and 55% and 60%. And what are all those people that's paying 40, 50, 55% going to start doing? They're either going to start leaving. Like Atlas Shrugged, are they going to start sending their money where? Overseas, like they're doing now. So that's you know, throw, I don't, I don't care about the social issues. Okay, what you want to do with whatever that's this is what's killing America right here is the income tax. And I was doing like how, like, you know how people say college school, college, we can't actually make college free, we just like manage stuff. Yeah. Like I, have, I was doing some research and it was like, you know, they just got a budget line for how much money they give out for meal breaks and let their people for actual tuition free. That was like that America would sell, we save like $7 billion per year. If they were just like, not how to do it away with meal break and just make it like a level of free mm -hmm. tuition. Like you say, like seven million dollars a month. Like that. I don't know. I'd have to look at that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of money going through the Pell Grant, but the reason that is is because the colleges are soaking up that money to pay for all these vice presidents and presidents and all this other stuff. See, there's a lot of inflation going, just like your books. Mm -hmm. Your books should not be $150 a book, okay? That's inflation. The book companies are doing that because they're offering this and they're offering that and they're offering this. Well, the colleges are doing it too. And each time you get a Pell Grant or a lottery paying for, what do you think the college is going to do with the tuition? They're going to go up. And that's why they're so astronomical right now is because so many so many dollars are being pumped into the colleges via Pell Grants, via scholarships, via uh, lottery and all that. Then you get these students, and, and it's a two thing. It's, it's the college's fault and it's the student's fault. All right? 
The reason it's the student's fault is because they pick these majors, these underwater firefighting majors, they can't get jobs, well actually it's threefold, they can't get jobs for because they're to get an underwater firefighting degree. They need to take journalism, they need to take a science major, they need to take an engineering major, they need to take a, a teaching major, you know, things that they, a nursing major, they need to take things that they can get a job in instead of underwater firefighting statistics or something like that. And you can't get a job in it, all right? Third, all of our jobs are going where? Overseas, because of NAFTA, because of these, these trade agreements that the politicians make, and who pays their check? We do. They don't get a paycheck. They don't work. Okay? They don't. They don't employ people. So you got three things going on there. So the student that takes an underwater firefighting degree can't get a job because of the degree, or you got some some people getting legitimate degrees. They can't get a job because their job is over in India or over in Mexico or over in China or wherever. So now you see where, where you're having these students with problems paying tuition. Yeah, this is why, on the average, how colleges and universities are good at CPT. CPT is going to give a billion dollars in tuition. Yep. And the colleges are making money and the book companies are making money. And neither one of them need to be making that much money. There's nothing wrong with making money, but they're making too much money. And the colleges, they're not making money and putting it in their pocket. They're making money to pay more people. to make. And it's not teachers that they're paying. It's executive vice presidents and vice presidents and deans and all this high level. So you've got all these colleges that are so top-heavy paying people six figures for a five-figure job. And some of them are not even needed. But anyway, that not to chase after rabbits, but... If, if things keep going the way they're going, these numbers are going to get higher and higher, and they're going to start taking more and more out of your paycheck. And then people are going to start saying, look, why don't you just, if you've got a business, why don't you just pay me cash? That's what I do. I don't want to check because it's income. So let's take this off now. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the first 10%. Of his, how much? How much was he making? Let's look, 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 look. Ninety thousand. So he's going to be in what bracket? He's going to be in this bracket right here, twenty-five percent. So that's going to be twelve thousand seven fifty at ten percent. And then forty-eight six thousand minus twelve thousand seven fifty at what? Fifteen percent, and then ninety thousand minus forty-eight six at twenty-five percent, and that's what you're going to have to get used to. So how much does he owe? He owes eleven thousand. Now, why don't you see what happens if he does single? At ninety thousand, let's see what the difference is. Do single at ninety thousand. Single at ninety thousand. Up, oh, he's up what? I think I'm gonna check in to head of household. I don't know about. Be better off or what? You tell me what you get.
So what's the difference? He's paying twelve thousand dollars head of household. What'd y'all get with singles? I'm sorry, what? Oh, well, let's do it together. Y'all just have to help me remember because it's at the bottom of the page. I, all this total, I think it's 90000 So let's take our handy-dandy calculator, and I'm going to use my store feature. So that's going to be 89, 892.5, right? And that's enter, and we're going to stow that, alpha A. All right, and then we got thirty-six two fifty, right? Thirty-six two fifty minus eighty-nine twenty. Just come on in whenever. That's fine. Eighty-nine twenty-five, and we're going to multiply that at what? Point one five, and we're going to stow. And alpha B. And then the next one is 87,850 minus 36,250, right? 87,850 minus, is that right? 87,850 minus 36,250 equals times what? 0.25 and stow. Oh, we already passed. Alpha C. And then 90,000 minus 8750, right? At 28. So 90,000 minus 8750, oops, 87,850 equals at 28% and stow alpha what? E. D or E? D. D. Okay, so alpha A plus alpha B plus alpha C plus alpha D. Hey, I think I better check that out. 12,000 versus 18,000. I better check that out next year. I guess divorce is single, isn't it? I need to check that out. So you see why it can be a little bit confusing? Let's try this one. It says Jessica and Frank Really? Jessica and Frank are each entitled to one exemption of $3,900. Okay, so that's $5,800 or, $7, or something like that. Because they are married, filing jointly. Their standard deduction is $12,200. We subtract these amounts, blah, 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 blah. They make, they make $180,000 minus the deductions and minus the exemptions. So their taxable income is what? All right. Married jointly. Let's go back up to the top. There we go. $180,000. So they're going to be where? Right here. 28%. So you do that one. 
like I said, 90%, well, 75% of being able to do your taxes is being able to do this tax code. How do you drink that stuff? I can't drink it. I can't drink it. I have to drink, I drink Dr. Pepper or something. I can't drink coffee. I've tried. There's three things I've never developed a taste for. One is coffee. I've tried, but I just taste hot water. And smoking, I've never developed a taste for that. And beef liver, I've never developed a taste for that. Huh? What? I can't stand it. I don't even, I mean, if I was starving, yeah, I would eat it. You know, if I was starving, a dog will eat turnip greens after two or three days. You know, but I just, there's two or three things I don't like. Barbecue chicken, the meatloaf, and beef liver. I don't like any of those. If you're gonna take if you're gonna take hamburger and cook it, I want a daggum hamburger or a hamburger steak. But meatloaf is a waste of time in my opinion. I, I haven't eaten at McDonald's in probably five years. Four years. Four years. I haven't eaten there. Now I'll stop by and I'll get a Coke or a tea, or I might get a biscuit, but it's going to be a buttered biscuit. It ain't going to be. But I will not eat that food. After I saw that, there's two films. One uh, one video was the pink slime stuff for the chicken nuggets, and then the ammonia stuff that they put. Mm -mm, I'm not going to eat there. There's two places I'll get a hamburger from. One is Hardee's. They got some dead good, good hamburgers and Wendy's. Those are the two places I'll get a hamburger from. Have you ever been to that place called Arnold's that's like right behind? Oh, yeah. The it's good. It's good. I like Arnold's. Like I like, I'd rather go to Arnold's. I've been to Fuddruckers several times and it just ain't all that to me. It kind of went down and down. Say it five times fast. <laughs> I don't blame you on the liver and the smoking, but black coffee is definitely. I can't taste it. People, people taste it. I don't taste it. My taste buds, it doesn't register. No matter what, what kind of milkshake I make out of it, it doesn't. Hazelnut, Irish cream, a butternut, cinnamon, cinnamon bun. Milk, sugar, cream. I've tried it. I taste hot water. It tastes like hot water. Yeah, I don't see how you taste it. I'll just stick with dark pepper. <sighs> All right, how much we got? How much is it? 180,000? I'm sorry, what? 160. 160. So I'm going to go with married filing jointly right here. And we're going to take uh, 17, that'd be what? 1785, right? So 17, first one would be 1785. Enter. Stow. Alpha. A. And then 725 minus 17850. 725. Minus seventeen eight fifty multiplied at what fifteen percent equals and sto alpha b and then we're gonna take one hundred and forty six four minus seventy two five hundred and forty six four Minus 140, 72.5, sorry. So you got to keep on it. You can't, it, it, you'll get confused real easy. Times 0.25. Stow alpha C. 
And then the last one, what'd you say, 160,000? Minus 146.4. times 0.28 sto alpha D. So now alpha A plus alpha B plus alpha C plus alpha D. Y'all get 32, 32, 3, 32, 265.5. So they owe 32000 Now, this is where your tax credits come in. When you file them jointly, if you're buying a house and you got a house and you got 15 solar panels on it and you get $3,500 per solar, solar panel or something like that, $2,000, and then you got two Priuses out front, you get a tax credit for each one of those, and then you get you got five children, you get a tax credit for each one of those, so that's deducted off the 32,265. Well, yeah, basically, that's less taxable. I mean, that's what they owe, yes. But it all comes out to be in your pocket at the end, which is not much, but so let's see what they got. Next page. No yawning. Look at there. 32,265. Here's your tax credits. A tax credit reduces your total tax bill, taxable income. So, see, mortgage interest. Anything that you're paying interest on, whether it's a student loan. When I graduated Clemson, I had $30,000 of student loans. Now, why did I have less than what they're talking about now? Because I took advantage of Pell Grant and GI Bill. All right? You know, you can get a free education. Just join up with Uncle Sam. He'll give you a free education. Good. You want in the Marine Corps, right? No. Why does everybody say that? I will laugh or cry if they yell at me. I'm not so happy. Well, then you need to go in the Army because I don't think they yell at you. I think you do aerobics in the Army. <laughs> anyway, now, uh, the easiest one, the best one I would suggest for women is the Navy. Yeah. The Navy is the best one. And I will stand behind that 100%. Because the Marines is the Department of the Navy. But the Navy, probably Air Force. Navy and Air Force is the best to, for one woman. I would say Navy. That's what I would do if I was you. Okay. Yeah, you put up with the Marines. But you got to put up with the Marines. They're in there too. All right. But yeah. Uh, anything, the only thing I don't think you can claim is your car. But if you own your own business, you can claim the mileage and you can claim the, the gas and that kind of thing. Um, usually what you do is you just turn... What, what I do for the farm is I use one credit card for nothing but fuel, like diesel fuel. Okay? And see, so that goes down as an expense for the farm. I just give them that credit card statement. At the end of the year, they give you a report, and I put fuel, and I give that to the accountant. Now, what about your own personal? Well, personally, and, I mean, uh, the surveying business doesn't use diesel fuel. So I use another credit card for that. Now, I don't use credit cards like I don't pay for them. No, I pay for them. I use credit cards to keep it separate, to keep everything separate. And I use, for feed, I use another credit card, and I use it at Tractor Supply and at Southern States. So everything on it is feed and farm supplies like fence, fencing materials and things like that. So 
where some people use credit cards for vacation and stuff. I use credit cards to help generate reports so I don't have to put it on Excel and keep up with the receipts. So that's why I use credit cards. I will be glad to pay the extra money for using that credit card just so at the end of the year I hand something over to the accountant and if something's wrong with it, it's not my fault, it's whose fault? It's the credit card or the, the people that I'm buying through, it's their fault, not my fault. So tax credits, that's, you know, you might want to put down some, some things, interest, uh, electric cars, Solar panels, windmills. I'm not talking about the windmill that you see at, at Farmer Joe's. I'm talking about the big propellers that you see in Nevada. Some people actually put those things up and they get a tax credit for it. It's kind of unheard of. But you know, <laughs> you know, I'm all in favor of energy, new energy. But you know, why don't they put? Why don't they go out to you know five miles out on the coast? And put those things up on. Out, why don't they put them on the coast? Because well, what's always coming in on the coast? Wind. Why not put them on the coast? You know, some people are actually complaining against solar panels and the wind turbines. I don't. I don't complain them at all. I think. You could put you could put wind. Why not put wind? Why not put the wind turbines on top of these mountains? What it is, people are complaining because like they kill birds. Kill birds. Yeah, a lot of I kill birds when I duck out. Yeah, the yeah. Birds. Yeah. How does those big propellers kill birds? Just because they, uh, there's big flocks of birds that can fly between them, and they actually hit them. It's, it's nature. We're getting rid of the stupid ones. They're doing the service. <laughs> And then uh, people are complaining about solar panels because the burning birds live quite well. Like birds will spontaneously in the transport. I'm not even going to comment on that. But it's <coughs> stupid. Okay. I know. That's what I say. There's always what? There's always one. Okay, now, right here, here's about the third part. Okay, so far there's three parts. One, find your taxable income. Two, understand the, our deductions and exemptions. Three, know the tax code. Four, know your uh, tax credits. And then five is Social Security and Medicare. Okay. Um, FICA is calculated in all what? Wages, tips, and self-employment. This is where you get into what's taken out of your check. There's a little video there too you can watch. Um, now with employers it's different. If, if you pay $25 in Social Security, I got to pay $50. I'm the employer. I got to pay twice. So read up on this section right here because it says FICA is paid by both employers and employees in equal shares. For 2013, the FICA tax rates were blah, 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 blah. Okay? You need to make a note of these because 7.65% on the first 113,000 of income from wages. So if you make $85,000, you multiply that by 7.65, and that's what's going, that's what's going to be deducted or added. Okay. Individuals who are, this is what I have to do if I hire somebody. That's why I don't hire anybody. I try to do as much as I can and pay cash. Um, blah 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 blah. Medicare. This talks about 3.8 and 0.9 percent on ordinary income, and they're going to give you an example right here. So this is a good example. You need to write it down on page 260. In 2013, Jude—I don't like that name. Jude earned 26,000 in wages and tips from her job waiting tables. Calculate her FICA 
FICA taxes, and total tax bill, including marginal taxes. Blah, 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 blah. 26,000 times 7.65 is what? 1989. Okay? She has a deduction of, did it say a deduction? Did it tell you what she's, okay, standard deduction. Single, okay, single, single and standard deduction. So that's where the 39 and the 61 comes from. So 16,000 is what she put, she owes or what she's being taxed on, I'm sorry. And you go through and you do the tax code and you come up with those three, she owes $3,943 in taxes, right? That's what she owes. Now her total, her overall tax rate, including FICA and blah, 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 you gotta do that .152. Her tax rate is about 15.2%. She pays slightly more in FICA tax than her income tax. So she's going to get money back. How much did she pay in FICA? 1989. That's what goes to the government. 1989. And that's, let's see, let's see, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I'm sorry, what? You say something now, what? But she's got over here at like four times saying, oh yeah, she's like, nah, I don't, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Dividends and capital gains, these are for rich folks. I get dividends. My dividends are like 0.25 cent or point or 25 cent. I get dividends off my dadgum savings account and stuff like that. But what are we talking about? We're talking about the rich folks. We're talking about like the Romneys and the and the Trumps. That's who we're talking about. These people get like tax breaks. Dividends and capital gains. Not all income is created equal. These are these are monies that come off of stocks and uh, short-term capital gains within 12 months and then over 12 months. What are they doing? Sounds like they got a porn movie going on. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. They are taxed at the same rates as ordinary income. Long-term capital gains are over 12 months. Write these down. 0% for income in the 10 and 15% tax brackets. 15% for incomes in all higher tax brackets except the 39.6 bracket. And then 20% for income in the 39.6 bracket. So 20% comes off of your, so let's look. In 2013, Serena was single and lived off an inheritance and was a stripper. I'm sorry. Her gross income, she makes 90000 a year. I'm just joking. Um, with a name like Serena. Her gross income consisted solely of 90000 in dividends. Because of what? Inheritance. And long-term capital gains. She has no adjustments to her gross income, but has $12,000 on itemized deductions and personal exemptions, blah, 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 blah. So $90,000, she lives off her interest. $90,000 minus what? $12,039. So she owes, she's taxable income of seventy-four one. Okay, now here's what you do when you run it through the blah, 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 when you run it through the uh, tax code. She owes $56,000, I mean $5,678. She's around 
and that's how that works. So 90,000, she's in these bracts right here. Question. Why are just these two? She made what? 74. Because her income is all dividends and long-term capital, she pays tax at the special what? Rates for these type of income. The zero rate for individuals and long-term gains is for the 10 or 15%. If it had been ordinary income, means her first $36,000 of income, the rest of her income is taxed at special 15%. So what do you think about that? She don't get taxed because it's what? It's dividends. She only gets taxed at the first two levels. How much did she? She made ninety thousand. She's taxed. She she's supposed to be taxed on seventy four, but she's only taxed at what the first two levels. So what do you think about that? That's a pretty good place to be, isn't it? It's a pretty good place because she's at zero percent. Tax deferred, that's your IRAs. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can read about that. There's an example right there. I'm not going to worry too much about tax deferred. I want to get to another example. Where's my, okay, that's it. Let's go to the, let's go to the handy dandy. One question, I want to go to the, um, study plan. Let's pull out a question. All right, do this one. Winona, Winona, Winona and Jim. I'll give you a bunch of these on the test. Winona and Jim are married, filing jointly, with a taxable income of blah, blah, blah. They are also entitled to a $6,000 tax credit. Now that tax credit is not a deduction. You save it or you total after the tax code and you subtract it off of that. So you need to make a note on that. Use the table below to calculate their tax owed. So you all do that. So 349,000, they're going to be in the 33%. And I guess they want you to take off the standard deduction as well as the per person, so that's going to be two people. So let's go ahead and figure that. 
Excuse me. Hmm. I'm the master of this universe. I can yawn. 349. This mouse sucks. Pad moves. Minus 12, 2. Minus 39, what is that? 7,800. All right, somebody subtract those three. What do you get? 329,000. All right, that's taxable income. <coughs> now, what do you do with the uh, taxable income after you get the deductions off? What does the tax credit do? Mm -hmm. So we don't take it off the 329000 We take it off the final. So let's go ahead and run this 329 through the machine. So that's going to be... 1785. Oh, excuse me. Alright, then we're going to take 725 minus 17850 and multiply that by 15%. Somebody give me that. What do you get? 8,197. Point five. And then we're going to take 146.4 minus 72.5 and multiply that at 25%. What do you get? 475. Everybody get that? And 223.050 minus 146.4 multiplied at 28%, what do you get? 400 and what? And then the last one is 450, I'm sorry, 398, 329.000. Minus 223.050 and multiply that at 33%. 963. 963.5. Add all those up. We get $84,883, even. So basically, <clears throat> they owe $80,000, and their total is $300,000, $329,000. So, you know, a hundred thousand. Let's say a hundred thousand. That's the third. So, I'm just, I'm just putting this into, you know, if you make three hundred thousand dollars, you can expect to give a third of it to what? I don't know what I'm saying. And as we keep growing, as DHEC keeps getting bigger, IRS keeps getting bigger, the immigration offices keep getting bigger. What's going to keep going up? Taxes. Welcome to the Republican Party. <laughs> because you don't want those taxes going what? Up. And the more government jobs, GUV, 
apostrophe M-E-N-T. The more government jobs, the more those taxes go up. And some of y'all know people that work in the government. I do. There's a lot of waste and a lot of junk. A lot. You could take you could take two hundred government employees and get by with probably twenty five. Now, what are we going to do with that tax credit? Now, what is that? What is six thousand compared to eighty four thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars? It's called a drop in the what? A drop in the well, yeah, the bucket. Yeah, you got good parents. In other words, is the tax credit going to really benefit you if you're making three hundred thirty thousand a year? Not really. That's why people make fun of tax credits because they're really not that big of a deal. And if you can afford to put fifteen panels on your house, which will cost you like the price of another house. If you can afford to do that, then what do you probably make? You probably make that right there, and you might get, you know, two thousand dollars a panel. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay. All right. So what you need to be doing is working on these problems because I'm going to put a few of them on there. I'm not going to put a lot of the FICAs on there. I'm not going to put a lot of, of these right here, right here. The ones I'm going to put on the test because it's very important that you know how to do that. All right. Comprende? All right. Two or three things I need to do before y'all leave. One, I need to stop the do jigger. I don't know what happened to Miss Lancaster. I think something's wrong with her. No, I don't.